Good morning. We're working on Gem Wars. We're going to be creating the matchmaking server today. We're going to be doing it in, in C Sharp. Uh, we're going to be using a .NET standard libraries. We're using MongoDB to hold the data uh, between the TCP servers, although at this time we're only going to have one TCP server uh, for the game and the um, <coughs> matchmaking. And then we'll scale that in a later video. Um, so let's get started. Uh, let me go ahead and first pull up my board. And the issue I'm working on is, is Gem Wars 36. So we'll make a branch here called Feature Gem Wars 36. And I'll push that out. Okay, so in this, we want to create the matchmaking server for a Gem Wars. Let me show you how it currently operates. This is a solution which contains both the Unity project as well as the. Um, <coughs> it contains the Unity project as well as the um, back end that we've created. These are all the different layers that we have. We have an identity server for authorization with a custom grant flow here of a Google grant validator. This is uh, what issues our tokens um, and maintains our authorization. Although for testing, I'm using um, authorization, what is it called, client operator resource owner password credential flow um, so that way I'm just passing in a username password and so we'll make a couple of different accounts for that today this is the TCP server the single instance that we have where we register all of our dependencies you can see I have a dependency already here for Mongo so we'll just tie into that additionally we have a web API which is for our initial connection when you receive your identity server token. The next thing that it does is it hits the web API, which downloads the initial payload, which includes all of the scriptable objects in the game, um, because they can be modified by me, and then it gets downloaded when you start. Uh, so you get updated uh, data with every time you play. Um, <coughs> and also a little note to say that if it's in game, so that way our game state is maintained. So now that the back end is running, we can run the game. I've rethemed it just a little bit. Not sure if I 100% like it. I'd love your feedback on it. Um, you can see it's connecting to the matchmaking server. And I have a current game in progress, so it's going to reconnect to that game. And this is the game which I have in progress. It's a single player game. Um, you can see here the purchasable I, uh, board items. It looks like I could purchase like this one and this one. And at the moment, uh, because we're using the um, SQL Server, that's my non-production one, we have latency, which is really nice so that we can see um, how this thing is going to react uh, when we have network latency to the back end. Additionally, um, so this is one thing I need to correct, is that when you're dragging a piece, we don't want this bottom bar to scroll, but we'll fix that later. So what we'll do is over in Gem Wars, we're going to create a new task which is when dragging piece don't scroll the drawers uh, scroll rect and we'll just create that issue okay you can see that as we play it'll refresh the pieces uh, from the server everything's done transactionally on the server um, so that way you can always be sure that your move either registers or it doesn't. There's no half transactions allowed. Everything is held inside of the application database context. I've changed it so that these background objects are now pulling from a prefab manager. So that way you can have as many of these things as you need. But when we, let me start it one more time. I didn't mean to close it. Just one second. All right, sorry about that. Okay, 
So, uh, when I abandon this game, does this button have a... It doesn't, but this one does. So if I look at my, this, let's first abandon our game. And then in my manager for, let's do a free play online. If I look at my abandon game button, it has a prefab, which is pulling from this. The background is raycastable. The foreground is not, so the background should be what is on our border, but it's not. We currently have this image for sparkle, which we don't want. So let's kill this and then set this as my background and then we'll apply it to my prefab and we're good. So now we can jump back into the title and we can run this again. Now, currently when I do matchmaking, uh, the only one that's hooked up is practice versus AI. And when I push the APK later today, I'm gonna disable battle because that's the next feature which we're working on. Uh, so practice versus AI, when I do this, it's going to create the game on the server. But what I actually wanna do now is I wanna have a matchmaking server which is going to handle how this uh, works. So we're gonna start building out the battle screen. You can see that our percentages are set, everything is set. This will play until we quit and then we can come back and it'll continue to play. The computer will speed up over time with levels. It looks like my objects that I'm passing here, I have them on debug mode. So if I look at my scriptable object here for a board, it should be a 10 by 10 and that won't register yet until I send that to the server. So inside of Gem Wars, underneath my title manager, I'm going to send my payload across. And this will re-register all of my scriptable objects as active in the database. So when other users connect to the game, uh, these are the objects that they will download. What's wrong? Okay. Now, I imagine that this is either going to fail because it's gonna have the wrong objects and I need to abandon the game. Well, let's see what happens here. This will take a second as it uploads everything. There we go, it's gonna reconnect to the game and now we're good. And it's corrected the size of the board, which is exactly what we wanted. You can see that the back end will continue to run and then um, we can make our play pieces. Everything is registered on server side for logic when playing online. So let's uh, uh, comment back our posting. And now let's get started on the matchmaking server. So when we first connect to this game, we have an option to play battle. And on the server, the TCP request that comes in for the game includes battle. So we're going to modify on the, on the back end here. What we're going to do is we're going to first create a new business logic layer class and we're going to call it a match making server. Do I want it to be server? We'll just say match making BLL. Okay. And we want this to inherit from my base BLL and be a public class. So when our users are connecting to the matchmaking BLL, the first thing that we want to do is receive a game. So when I'm looking at my request here, 
we have these game managers, which will be listening for the requests. This is for a game. So we're going to want to set that to be this new service that we're working on. Interesting, the formatting is all screwed up here. So here, I'm going to, in my TCP server, underneath my programs, we're going to add a singleton here for my new match making BLL. And we don't have any of these additional parameters that we need to pull from DI. Okay, so that's registered. So now in here, in my game maker BLL, game manager BLL, I have this list of game managers, and then I also want to have a list of matchmaking servers. And this is a matchmaking BLL. Oops. Okay. <clears throat> so when I start this, I'm going to pass over a match making BLL called match making service server is equal to null. So that way, if we have a value, we can say has value, no, okay. Here, if my matchmaking server does not equal to null, then we're gonna do a matchmaking servers.add my matchmaking server. The server is kind of slow, isn't it? Um, it is for the online one, and it is on purpose. So I have a free NAS, which is running in my closet, um, as, and that on it has a Windows domain server, a Windows SQL server, it has a uh, NAT, a network access terminal, so that it can supply internet to my subdomain, and a DHCP server, as all images on top of the free NAS. So the SQL server has like, I think four or six cores assigned to it, and maybe 12 gigs of RAM. And it's an enterprise server, uh, but it's, it's, again, it's not running on a dedicated machine, so it's got significant latency with it. Um, the other things that are hooked up to that database are the Pixel Horror Studios, Jira, and Confluence. Uh, the, I have another company uh, that has a Jira and a Confluence as well. And then the free NAS. So it's, yeah, that's sort of where the latency has come from. But once we put it onto the testing server, uh, it's going to be hosted on AWS. Okay. And so now for our matchmaking server, when we request this, I want to say that this is a, for each one of my matchmaking servers, I want to have a matchmaking server. And we're going to do a on message event for my packet request, which is this request. Oh, that's interesting. That got really loud. For this packet request game, what is happening to my microphone? Okay, so we're going to use this packet request game here, and then, so on my matchmaking server, we need to ha introduce a new on matchmaking event asynchronous, which is going to pass in this packet request games and this list of args. Okay. So in the matchmaking BLL, we're going to introduce this new function called public. And it's called uh, virtual asynchronous task. And it's going to be on message event async. And it's going to pass in a packet request game and a TCP. Oh, God.
and one of these. <coughs> Just add in our dependencies here. Okay. So when I receive this event, if I switch, well, the args that we're passing in here are, if I look at my game single player, we want to introduce a new concurrent bag for our messages received, so that way we don't have duplicate messages for the lifetime of the server. We could introduce a bust on that maybe, but I don't think I need to. And then, let me go into here and we're going to add a new task, which is This is going to be called add bust for cached messages received IDs. Okay. And so now I want to say if my messages received don't have anywhere where my uh, my ID is equal to the packet dot ID. Then I'm going to add it. Okay. And now I want to switch. Actually, we're going to move this out. So I'm going to do this above into here. Like that. And then that means that my do any of these have overrides? Did it lock up? Come on, computer. Okay, we're gonna kill it. I don't know what's going on here. It's this one, probably. Interesting. Okay, let's just open that back up now. That was weird. Good girl. Okay. Did it like lose all of its settings now? That's odd, like total crash. Okay, so in the business logic layer for matchmaking BLL, we were working on this and we were comparing it to my generic here.
So I want to introduce here a switch on my packet request dot packet type dot we need to switch on my args dot message event type so we only do this when we receive it okay and so now what I want to do is I want to switch on my packet request game dot packet type. Now this one is only going to be interested in requests that are being sent across. So now we're going to deserialize my request here like that. I don't need to. I can just switch on my packet request game dot packet request game that it's a game and I believe I'm already doing this in the base manager. here. So I'm only sending this request to matchmaking servers. And that's happening only when messages are being received. So I don't need to double check that. We can scrap all of this because we know that this is fine. And we can just rock with this. So when we receive our match making request here, and just to double check, when I'm looking at game manager, this is not doing a check here which is fine. It should be though. So we're going to move my logic from here over into this base game manager. not here, you want to put it after we get the packet. And so we can move this over here. And then if I look at both of these, they should no longer have it. And that should be much more efficient. So back over here on my matchmaking service. Hey, Fallen Hope, I thought you changed your username. Here we have my messages received. We don't need this logic any longer. This is now a... That's fine. Okay. So when this user enters, we want to have a connection to MongoDB here. And in my program for the TCP server, Mongo is connecting to this database, PHS Gem Wars. So in matchmaking BLL, I want to make a constructor 
and I want to add here a reference to the what are we injecting Mongo which is underneath services called I Mongo DB service and we're gonna have a protected read-only I Mongo DB service called Mongo DB So when this request comes in, we want to do a mongodb dot, and we want to do a store document, and it's a new, and a document here is defined as, I believe, a DTO, right? This has been used here. It's a VM, it's a document. Okay, so I want to make a new VM then, which is a view model. And let's go ahead and create a new folder in here called Actions. A new folder in here called games a new one in here called matches a new one in here called boards I'm gonna put all of these inside of a folder called game called game VMs. This one is a block and a board. They go together under boards. So this is action VMs. This is board VMs. My drawer VMs. Drop piece. Let's do the games here. We have another one for matches. We need another one here for rewards. Another one in here for rounds. piece here goes into a board. We need a new one in here called match set VMs. There's a reason for this. Drawers, draw pieces, lines. Well, I'll put all that here. We'll move the drawer, draw. We'll move a line into, yeah, it's fine. We'll leave it there because it's managed by a board. And then we have a match set. This is match generic. We have a match set. And then finally we have match player, which we can put under match. VMs. Just double checking here. Yeah, that looks right. Okay, these are all game VMs. So we need a new VM type here, which is going to be called a matchmaking VMs. 
And my first one here is going to be say is going to say match make game player VM. We're going to make this a base VM. And on this I want to have a player DTO. And that's going to be it, because we only have one game type. So in advance, I could just have a game type here when we're going to introduce more different kinds of game types. Is there any other information that we need to store about this matchmaking player? I was going to buy iFight, find an accomplished domain. I made it, I read. I was going to buy I fight find an accomplished domain. I don't understand what that means. <laughs> this is also going to include a timestamp and an ID, right? Right. No timestamp. We're going to add a date time called a timestamp and set it to date time dot UTC now. Also we need to have a new VM type here called a match making player. So when this comes in, we're going to store this as a new matchmaking player VM. Which is going to have a game type of my packet request game dot game type. A ID is automatically set to nothing. The time this needs to be renamed to timestamp is my we don't need to worry about that one my player we're going to retrieve the player and my VM type here is a match making player Okay, so we need to get the player. So we're going to add in here an I data access layer game data access layer. And so here I want to do a, a wait my game data access layer dot and I want to have here my player we have a read player async which is going to have to come from their ID and the context which is my args dot user ID and now we want to have a using var context equals a new application database context and I want to add in here now a I globals like that because my context needs to have my globals for the connection string and here we want to introduce a try catch
and I should have in my game data access layer a Now when I do server side logging for my let's look at a generic here something's got to have logging let's look at my web API I know that I implemented logging up here right here So these things are being held in a base controller currently. I'm going to move these to a service. I'm going to call this my It's not a business logic layer. It is a service. I don't want to put it in my data access layer here. I'm going to put it in a new one called base data access layer. Yeah, here we go. So when I look at this, my game data access layer is inheriting it. So they should be in here. And it means that we should have a read player with an ID. Just like that. And then a read player again with an ASP.NET username. That's right. Now I want to have one here which is called get log. Which is going to return a log API error for an endpoint type and our application user ID. Tell you what, we'll do this as the other as another ticket because this is going to expand out to adding server side logging. I have client side logging done. I haven't done server side logging yet, so let's just hold off on that for now. So over here on my matchmaking BLL, we're going to add a to do Rob add server side logging. Okay, now we need to have an update interval. So when I look at my base BLL, I have this new update with an update interval. So in my matchmaking BLL, Well, we'll do that later. I'm thinking I want to pass this as like a struct, the all of these parameters, but we can do that later. So I'm just going to pass an interval here. And this is going to be called Mongo pull interval in milliseconds. So we want to have a new variable here called private int timer index and we want to set that to zero. And now I want to have a public override for my update. And in this I want to say 
my timer index plus equals my update interval. And I want to also add a private bool is update running. So if my update is not running, then we're going to set it to run and do our timer index. If my timer index is greater than or equal to my mongo pull interval milliseconds, now I want to say my timer index is equal to zero. And we want to say timer events. And here I want to say is update running equals false. And the reason I'm doing that is because I want to have this as a task.run, and it's going to be an asynchronous task. And in the end of it, we're going to say is update running false. So we want to have a try and a catch like that. And now I'm going to have a new protected virtual avoid on update event. And we're going to make this a asynchronous task. We'll make it asynchronous and do an await here. Whoa, that was so loud, dog. Holy <coughs> cr oh, crap, hold on. Ow, that hurt my ears. I'm sorry about that. I mean, good job letting me know she had to go to the bathroom, but that was so loud. Okay, so now we're in the update events. So what I want to do is first, my player here is a player DTO, and we want to pass it in here. We're also going to want to pass in here my, thank you for letting me know that. My TCP server. You've got to be close. What's it called? Oh, TCP net server auth. You also need to have a collection name on this. So we're going to add in here called matchmaking. Okay, we need to have another thing on here, which is we need an identifier for my server. So we're going to add a GUID here for my server ID.
like that. Okay, and now when we have our update, the first thing I want to do is await my MongoDB dot. And we'll probably need to move this poll to another class, but we'll do that in a little bit. Sorry. Yeah, MongoDB dot. I want to do a get documents. So we're going to add a new class in here called get documents, which is going to return an array of T's and just have a collection name. And this is going to be called matchmaking. Let's move this now to another class. And we're going to call this a matchmaking poll BLL. This one needs all this stuff and my update, not this stuff. means I can get rid of my game data access layer my globals And this needs to be a list of match making player VM array. Okay. Before I go on, let's go back to my matchmaker. And on this, I want to get rid of my update and my update event. Cool. So my matchmaking poll now, so this is going to have a number of users which are connected to it. And then my matchmaking poll, when it updates, we're going to, we need to introduce a new VM in order to uh, meet my criteria here. We're going to call it matchmaking players. And this is just going to be a list of matchmaking players called matchmaking player VM. Okay. And now what I want to do is this is all going to be on one server currently. This is all currently in one server. Once we scale, we will want to send this data to the appropriate server by server ID to add the player to the game with proper credentials.
So what I want to do is for each one of my matchmaking player in matchmaking players dot matchmaking players. that okay so now I've got a player and I want to remove them from Monco we want to do a good uh, I want to do a randomization here matchmaking players dot matchmaking players is equal to my Matchmaking players dot matchmaking players dot order by the it's a GUID dot new GUID so that it's random. Now what I want to do is for each one of my matchmaking players in here, I'm going to want to say need to introduce a rating system and match players by rating. For now, this is randomized. Okay. So we want to try to try to make sets of players matching the game type. So in here I want to do a switch on my matchmaking player dot game type. And now we want to add those players into this dictionary. Something like that. So we're going to add a var matchmaking games equals a new dictionary of my game type and let's see I want to have this with eight players each right so I may need to introduce a new ver a new variable for this. If I look at my game library or VMs Do we have a player VM? No, so we don't have a player VM. That's okay, but I do, if I look at my game VM, this has a number of players on it. So we could say that this is a game VM. Okay, so now we're going to add in, we're going to say 
to do ROM add error catching here for our server. Now, the first thing I want to do is a for loop that goes from my enum.get names of a type of game type dot length. I want to do my matchmaking games equals of my game type of I is equal to my new game VM. So what you're going to do here is you're going to say if my match making games of my match making player dot game type this needs to be a I collection of game VMs. And I want to get my this is going to be my list of games here. Now I want to say if there are any games dot where my players dot length are less than my number of players in the game then so here we want to get my we're going to say var, uh, uh, we're going to say context equals new application database context of a globals. And here I want to get my game SOs equals my context dot game SOs. And we want to do where my X is active to list a asynchronous. We're going to add in here a game SO selected equals my game SOs 
dot first or default, the one where the game type is equal to my matchmaking player dot game type. And then here my game so selected dot we need to add a new one in here for my number players. This is wrong. I want this to be if the, there are any games where my players dot count are less than my number of players. Otherwise, need to make a new game. Add to an existing game. So now here I want to do game selected equals my games dot first. We want to do where my players dot count is less than my game so selected dot number of players I want to do a order by GUID to uh, and we want to get the first or default We're going to say the players here are equals, and now I want to get my var game selected players equals my game selected dot players dot to list because it is an array, so I need to convert it to a list so I can add. my matchmaking player dot player and now we're going to do my game selected dot players equals game selected players dot to array and here You want to make sure that you're doing the right game here, where your x dot game type is equal to your matchmaking player dot game type, and Okay, so here I want to do my 
var game VM equals a new game VM. And I want to say my players equals a new player DTO array. And I want to add in here my matchmaking player dot player. And we want to set my game type equal to my matchmaking player dot game type. And my VM type equals to a game. And now I'm going to do my match making games of my game type of I. Oops, of my match making player dot game type dot add my new game VM. So you're either going to add it to an existing game or you're going to create a new game. And now that we have these, now we would alert the correct server that these games are ready to be generated and to transfer the players to the game servers. Just a second. Because I could use MongoDB PubSub to publish between the layers instead of this polling. Before, I'm going to look that up real quick. MongoDB PubSub C Sharp. That's not what I want. Cause I I'm I could just add it to my services. <laughs> Forty nine people like it. If I just look here at my MongoDB service and I go to the where it's being instantiated, Mongo client has sessions, watches. The session handle just doesn't have a client session transactions. I'm not seeing anything that leads me to believe that we're going to pub sub. Well, otherwise, we could have these things communicate through TCP. That would definitely be something we could do. We could have it communicate with signal R. You have TCP.net, you could just use it again to 
connect these services because th ideally there's only going to be one of these pulling services which is going to be creating all these games so here TCP server You actually haven't used that yet. So let's get rid of this. Well, right now we can just post this to Mongo. Hey there, Sound of Gaming. It's good to see you again. How are you doing today? Welcome back to the channel. We could do this with TCP signal R. Or Mongo Pub Sub. I'm doing great, thank you for asking. We're working on our matchmaking server today. Okay, so here, we're just going to post these to Mongo. So in my matchmaking VMs, I'm going to make a new class here called matchmaking game VM, matchmaking games VM. We'll make this a public. When I look at this one, this VM is a different type called matchmaking players. This is for matchmaking BLLs. This is for game manager BLLs. Okay. Oops. Matchmaking games. We want this to type be a type of base VM. And I want to make a new class in here called game VM called games. Okay, hold on. This is just one called Matchmaking Game. First off. Second off, we need to introduce new classes. Because right now, I'm going to open up Dryo. Let me do this again. We're going to call this Gem Wars Networking.
Weird. I don't know what any of this stuff is. I'm going to try to store it somewhere else. Second. A second, please. Okay, back with you. Just a second, I need to select where I want to put this thing, which is in PHS Gem Wars. One more second. <sighs> I see everything except this project. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to put it with PHS website for now. Let me jump back over here now. I can show the screen here. Sorry about that. Sound of Gaming says, I actually have a C-sharp question, if you don't mind. The internal... Access modifier came up this week in my class, and I'm struggling to find out why you use this. I'm basically trying to figure out its use case. The other question is about properties. If I have my field set as private in a class, and I use properties to set those variable values, then what's the point of keeping them private? Sorry for the blow up. No worries. So the private thing, the most important thing I can say about private is it's related to inheritance, right? So if you have classes that have properties in them and they are public, like POCO models that are transferring data, but now you have some kind of like a logic layer which is sitting on top and manipulating those models, right? You don't necessarily want to make those values which are being passed into your logic layer like public so like people could extend it and then change them so by making them private right the object comes in with its poco model and then those get assigned to the class as private and then people can when they extend off of it you can have functionality that can't be modified so example is like timer ticks. If I had something that I wanted to uh, put out public and I had something with like a timer tick that was happening every time, I wouldn't want the user to be able to modify, extend and override those methods, right? So I'd make those private and not virtual. And then, yeah. Okay, the other question is internal access modifier. I just want to double check on that definitious definition. Okay, that's what I thought it was. Okay, the only time I've used the internal method is here on this project, so called tcp.net. What is happening on my computer? Okay, so tcp.net, let me just show you real quick. Why are my settings all screwed up? Okay, so inside of tcp.net. If you look at the server classes, I have these classes exposed, which are like a server class and this has all the logic associated with like sending connections, receiving connections, and server events like errors. But below the scenes, there's another class in here called 
TCP Connection Manager. And this class is marked as internal. And this means that And this means that this can only be modified from within this application. So once this is compiled, this internal class will no longer be able to be extended. Does that make sense? But in this project, I need to extend TCP Connection Manager to make TCP Connection Manager auth. Okay? So I do need to have this thing marked like you would have protected, right? But I don't want you to be able to manipulate it outside of this project. So that's why I'm using internal. That's my understanding of it. So you can still have it extendable, but not extendable into additional projects. Because I don't want people to be able to come inside of tcp.net.server, the DLL, and be able to mess with the way that connections and identities are established. I already create this service in here called user service interface. I don't even know where it is. But you have to implement a user service if you want to use the auth module, right? Yeah. I've only found I need to use it on in very explicit use cases. So again, for TCP.NET, I'm using internal for this because if you are using the DLL that's compiled that I put up there on NuGet, right? You don't get to have the availability to be able to modify user connections. You get what comes out of the box. I provide you an extendable user service interface where you define the get user method, right? So you can do it however you want. But in terms of the connection management, I don't want you to be able to manipulate that outside and extend it. Now, if you download tcp.net.server directly, then you can extend it and make those modifications, right? So that's what it does. Yeah, sorry. That's the only real example I have is that tcp.net connection thing. I also have one for the handler. Let me just look at that real quick. I just don't remember. Because connections and the handler are very different classes and they are both managed to make, ugh, that wasn't what I wanted to open. Yeah, it has its use cases. I find sealed to be more interesting. I don't really understand that one still. Maybe ask your professor for me. Sealed. Or we could look it up. If I look at my handler, this one I want you to be able to override. Because in my manager, when you create the constructor, you can override the handler to provide additional TCP functionality for sending different kinds of messages. And for overriding the send messages. or your message received method. Anyways, 
That project needs some re retrofitting. I think that a lot. People like it, though. I like it. I use it in almost every project. So here, what we're going to do is now we're going to do a mongodb dot store document, and this is going to be my we're going to do this for each type of The thing is I want to pull the games one by one out of Mongo once they're put in there. So this is going to be a matchmaking game. in my match making games dot values. And now you're going to do my mongodb dot store document. And it's going to be a match making game and I'm going to store it inside of the collection called games queued. Now this is a new matchmaking game VM. And my game here is the matchmaking game of a type. So I don't want this. I want this. Because, okay, hold on, Sound of Gaming has more questions. That's totally cool, let's go. You said constructors, which brings up another C-sharp question. Why have more than one constructor if you only the one constructor once? Hopefully that makes sense. Like, I know you can overload constructors, but why? I'm also a slow typer. I guess the real question is, what's the point of having more than one constructor? Okay, I have an example of that. <laughs> so in this project, if, and I when when I program stuff, I I usually only put one constructor unless I'm making a game. So I can show it from the game perspective, but I could show it also from the backend programming perspective. So I'm using Entity Framework, which is a package that Microsoft puts out for interacting with my database. It's called uh, Relational Database Model. So I basically take something like SQL, which is its own set of like tables that are connected to other tables, 
and it turns them into objects that have collections of other objects, right? So all of that, when I am making transactions for adding things, for removing things, for getting things, for modifying things, that's all done in something called a database context. Now there's different flavors of this out there. One of them does identity database context. You'll see that that includes the identity server stuff from Microsoft. Database context is open. It means it, it's anything. So all of these different tables in here, uh, game instance, that's a table in my database. Matches, that's a table in my database. And actually all of these are different tables in the database for this project, okay? It's all controlled through this application database context. Now the required constructor for this is right here, which includes this list of database options. And that's because in database context, the constructor specifies you have to include context options, okay? So I specify those contact. So when you use this with the Microsoft uh, dependency injection system, it will automatically create these context options in DI and it will just put them in here. I've added this globals thing, just ignore this, okay? So if I wanted to create in my application somewhere a using var, context equals new application database context, I'd have to specify this options property. So I don't want to do that. For the most part, I want the uh, default options. So when I'm using my database context, I introduce a new constructor, which is uh, using uh, only the globals. So thereby I'm, I'm sidestepping their required logic for these options and using the defaults. Now a better example would be something like in my game, a piece. So if we think about a piece, now this is Unity. So because I'm in Unity, uh, let's go out of Unity. I think I have this as instances. Let's stay in Unity for a second. Now, in Unity, these init functions are the same as constructors, okay? There's no constructor in Unity. So, when we create a piece in the game, there are multiple ways that that can happen. One of them is that it becomes a piece that you draw immediately into your hand. Another way that a piece can be created is on the board where you purchase pieces. So because they have different origins, I can specify different constructors so that this one class can manage multiple uh, uh, scenarios. Okay. Back over here, we wanted to draw what our networking is looking like for this. So we're going to first have multiple of these entrance points. I'm going to add a cluster around these. Come on. Why can't I use this app anymore? Where's transparent? Why does it keep changing all of them? I only want to change certain of them. Is it because this is somehow defined to be a square? Yeah, that was bizarre. Okay, so this is my entrance point here. 
and I'm going to call this my multiple servers, and we're going to say that this is my um, get, uh, matchmaking server. Okay, and there's multiple of these. And we're going to have our users out here in different countries. And we're going to say that this one is, come on. I'm going to say that this one is USA, say that this one is Europe, say that this one is uh, China, and say this one is Brazil. And we're going to have each one of these different server locations here. So this one will be, say, in the USA, and this one will be in Europe. So my matchmaking servers are connected here to Mongo. Okay. And I'm going to say this could also be or Redis pub sub, which is kind of where I want to go, or TCP or signal R. Okay, and we also want to have each of our users connected to one of our matchmaking servers. Come on. And then the last one is this guy over here who's going to go to the US. Okay. I don't want to commit this yet. Okay. So the next step is we have our polling service and we only want to have one of these polling services and we call this matchmaking polling service Okay, whatever, that's fine. Perfect. Okay. And what this is going to do is this is going to assigns players to game VMs on a interval. And then we're going to have another one of these lines over here. Where we're going to connect this to another MongoDB.
It's interesting. Like that. Okay, and then what I want to say here is that this MongoDB instance is called Matchmaking Players, and this one here is called Matchmaking Games. Okay. And my next step in this the game analogy makes more sense. Basically it's a way to make an object with more specific functionality at one point in time rather than make one object that takes in seven arguments you can make one with three and add to it as needed. Sorry for the questions. Yeah you can do that. You can do the same thing also with optional parameters. It's just sort of however you want to make your cake, right? And no, no problem. I mean you're you're definitely getting getting into this, which is great, and so um, you know uh, the the more understanding and examples and stuff that I feel like people have, the greater their their knowledge grows, which really helps out in this in this uh, industry. When you start planning out the structure, my apps usually jump right in and got spaghetti code too. True, yeah, this one I'm already past the point where I could have spaghetti code, but the problem is is it's no problem is that I'm mapping out my my servers here. So we have these map make, matchmaking servers. We have one polling service, and now what we need to do is do this little bit again, right? And so I'm going to make a new set of these servers. And I'm going to call these my game servers. So they're going to be parsing Mongo for games that go to the US and then games that go to like say the Europe servers and now what I need to do is that these games are created I now need to notify my players Just want a straight line, and then I want a straight line again here. Something like this. Okay, and what this is going to do is it's going to notify users of server, notify users with game server connection information. And then after that's been completed, that's going to offload as a final step here from the games to the servers.
I want it to change into that other arrow now. The one that lets me... Yeah, this one. And this is going to be our final step, which is connect to game server, which creates and sends correct game VM. Something like that. Does that make sense? When all this is done, we store all of this information from our game servers over onto this other database instance which is my SQL server for long-term storage. And then we also have one more instance of this one up here. And this one is MongoDB. There's nothing else about it. There's no pub sub. And this one's going to be called games, like that. And these are actually the database names in here. And then we need one more double arrow for this to represent starting here. Going up to about there and connecting like that. Make sense? Let's go ahead and save this. Okay, so this is literally the pipeline that we are creating. So we've created these matchmaking servers, they output to Mongo. We're currently pulling onto this matchmaking service now we need to publish them back out onto the games, matchmaking games database, and have our game servers pick that up. So back here, where I'm creating my matchmaking game, and I'm storing this in, we don't want games queued, we're gonna call it match making games this is going to be for each var item in match making game dot match mate uh, dot value so this is an mm game and this is a match making game this is a match making games view model
Okay, this is just a game. Now I'm going to store this game in Mongo called Matchmaking Games. And this is going to be my game like that. And then we also want to pass in my VM type, which is a matchmaking. We look at this one more time. We want to include a matchmaking game. Just one, singular. Okay. So now that our poll is done, we need to look at our game servers and they need to pick this up. This matchmaking game needs to have a server DTO on it. And we need to add in here a server. And we're going to do a, this needs server management right here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a short break. When we come back, we're gonna implement this server management queue. Uh, if you have any questions when I'm working on, it's a great time to pop them into the chat. We also have that Discord, discord.pixelhorrorstudios.com, and I put the videos up at youtube.pixelhorrorstudios.com. We'll be back in, say, about 18 minutes. I'll see you in just a little bit. Thanks again. Bye. Oop, wrong button. Sorry, see you in just a bit.